Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we are going to wrap up our basic dice game that we've been creating for Big Idea 3 Algorithms and Programming. We're covering 3.1 to 3.7, so let's take a look. Here's an overview of Big Idea 3 Algorithms and Programming. We've already covered 3.1 variables and assignments in our app. We've covered 3.2 data abstraction, 3.3 mathematical expressions, 3.4 strings. In this video, we're going to wrap it up with 3.5 Boolean expressions. 3.6 conditionals and 3.7 nested conditionals. That's going to give us everything we need to complete our basic dice game that we've covered from 3.1 to 3.7. Let's look at 3.5. 3.5 is Boolean expressions. Here is your enduring understanding. Make sure that you understand that. Here is your learning objectives for Boolean expressions. For relations between two variables, expressions of values, write expressions using relational operators. Evaluate expressions that use relational operators. As always, I always tell you to look on the right side. These are the type of questions in the syntax that you would see on the end of course exam. You can see what you really need to know is a Boolean value is either true or false. We are going to do some of that in today's lesson and today's app. For relations between Boolean values, write expressions using logical operators. We're going to use some logical operators today in finishing up our basic dice app. And that's pretty much what we need for our Boolean expressions 3.5. 3.6 is conditionals. We've already used conditionals in our app. If we come over here, we've been using conditionals this entire year. That's how computers make decisions. If this condition, do this. Or do or that condition, do that. Well, look here, last video from 3.3 and 3.4, we made this update money procedure. Inside of here, this is a condition if the player wins. And this actually is a nested conditional. You can see a conditional inside of here, which is 3.7 nested conditional. So we've already done some of this stuff, but we're going to finish out this video by adding some more of these things and specifying it. We're also using, you can see, false. We're using true and false values, which is Boolean expressions. Let's look at the 3.6 conditionals information. Express an algorithm that uses selection without using a programming language. Selection determines which part of an algorithm are executed because based on a condition being true or false. What is that? That is right here, update money. If the player wins, do this or else do that. And we're gonna do some more of that today. So that is your conditional. For selection, write conditional statements, determine the result of the conditional statements. Again, make sure that you're reading this stuff. This is how it will look on the AP Computer Science Principles exam. But we will program some of that today. All right, 3.7, nested conditionals. I just told you we've done that as well. Let's look at this. For nested selection, write nested conditional statements. Determine the result of nested conditionals. Nested conditionals statements consist of conditional statements within conditional statements. We've already done that. And we did that here. We're going to do more of that for our game rules, which we're going to make today. So let's get started. If we come to our class page, you can see 3.5 to 3.7 conditionals, basic dice. We do have a lot of sounds here. The sounds are primarily for extra at the end of this. I want to get the coding out of the way and then I'm going to leave the extras to you. Let me just show you the extras. So when we first open up our screen, screen one, you can see here, nothing's really going on. We're simulating we're at a casino, but we want to have some sound, right? We wanna make sure we're there. So I've given you this background music. And you can see, also we're gonna be completing our game in this video whether a person wins or loses. So I gave you a bunch of losing sounds and a bunch of winning sounds that we're gonna play as well. So I've given you four winning sounds and four losing sounds. In the previous video, Big Idea 3.2 was this data abstraction. They wanted us to make a variable with a list in it. We did that with some sound effects. You're gonna do the exact same thing on your own to see what you've learned for these four sound effects. So if somebody loses, they're gonna pick randomly from these four. If somebody wins, it's gonna pick one of them for these four. 
and it will play that sound effect. So let's just hear them. Here's the next sound effect. Here's the winning sound effects. Do a check cash register. Remember, we're going to be winning money. Here's another one. And here's some cheering. Yay! So these are the sound effects you're going to need. I've already downloaded them to my computer. And at the end of the video, I'll add them in and walk you through that part of it. But let's get to the coding. What do we have left? If we come over here, you can see we can go to our, to learn how to play dice. We go to our dice rules. Remember we flipped this. So if I had my phone, I could flip it and it would only be seen in landscape mode. I'm just going to go Bring back. If I go to play game. Play dice to win some real money. So what do we have working so far? We have Rollum. We have these images. We have the current role working. We have the sum working. We do not have this you win working. We kind of have money um this updates but it's not really checking if we win or lose so we have to update that so we have a little a couple of things to do let me just show you So you can see these are updating, down here is updating, the sum is updating. We need to work on you win, we need to work on the money, and we need to work on the dice rules. Let's actually go back and look at the dice rules. So we go back over here, remember in our unplugged activity before we even started this, remember in our unplugged activity, I gave you the dice rules and we kind of went over them. I went over the simulation on how you win and you lose on the first roll versus the other rolls and you kind of, we went through this activity just to make sure you understood dice. Well, now we're actually gonna code that. We also have, from the last video, again, our dice rule screen. Now it's gonna flip, so I'm gonna rotate this just so we can go over it. And you can see on the first roll, you win if you get a seven or 11, but this is only on the first roll. You lose if you get a two, three, or 12. If you don't get that on your first roll, if you get a four, five, six, eight, nine, or 10, that becomes your point. Your point is the number that you need to roll again in order for you to win. So if you get your point, you will roll again. If you get your point or seven after the first roll, you win if you get your point. The only way for you to lose after the first roll is if you get a seven. Some pretty basic rules. So to code this, we're gonna have, need a conditional. We're also gonna need a nested conditional and it's gonna cover all those things. It's gonna need a logical expression, which is or, or. That's what we're talking about when we're here on 3.5, using logical expressions, using conditions, using true or false, condition or this. We're saying that right here, seven or 11, two, three, or 12. So this really covers everything between 3.1 and 3.7. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead over to our play dice game. You can see it automatically flips, so I'm gonna rotate my phone as well, move that back. Let's work on our dice game rules. So to do that, let's make a procedure. And where do I wanna put it? I'll put it over here. All right, so I'm gonna make a procedure. And let's call it check dice game rules. Now. Let's add our comments in. Always great to comment your code, especially for the AP Computer Science Principles. Create performance tasks. When you have to include your code, you wanna make sure that you comment it. It makes it easier for you to do your written response. All right, so what are we saying? This is check basic dice game rules. Now we have one thing on the first roll only. So I'm gonna say A, if you get a seven, you win. B, if you get a seven or 11, you win. If you get two, three, or 12, you lose. Or C, you set your point to the number, to the result, which is four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, two. After the first roll, we're gonna say keep rolling until you get a seven or point. 
and say A, if you get a point, you win, and B, if you get a seven, you lose. So here is everything we're gonna do inside of here. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and start out with on the first roll only. We have a variable called current roll. So we're gonna see if the current roll is equal to one. We're gonna come up here, bring in our condition, and go to math. I wanna compare a number, so I'm gonna pull this in here. Current roll, and go back to math, pull in this and say one. So if the current roll is one, that is all the stuff up here. If it's not one, that means it's down here. So it's else. So it's the first roll or else it's not. It's the second, third, fourth, fifth. We're just gonna click on this little settings box. Remember the settings box in App Inventor, every time you see a blue settings box, you can modify that block. We can do an else if, if we had another condition we wanted to plug in like this, but we just want the first roll or else keep rolling. So I'm gonna do else. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little bit tricky. We're talking about nested conditionals. And if we go back over here, you can see nested conditionals consist of a conditional statement within a conditional statement. So here, this is a conditional statement. If something, this is my condition. We need some more ifs. You can see it right in here. If you roll a seven or 11, or if you roll a two through a 12. So we're just gonna go back to con control. I'm gonna put another if statement in there. Now I know this is gonna get long, so I'm gonna move this over. I wanna say if I roll a seven or 11. Now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna pull in this logic block and let's go to math. So if I roll a seven. Now, how do I know if I roll a seven? Well, I just need to take the sum of these two die images. Well, earlier we made this die sum and you can see we were already using it down here in update display die sum. So that's how this, the sum is 10. This gets updated by simply adding this little procedure we made, die one plus die two, whatever those values are, show it right there. And that's where we're updating it. We're now gonna call that a lot over here. So inside of here, I'm gonna say if the dice sum is equal to seven. I also need if the dice sum is equal to 11. So here's the issue. This only fits one thing. This is where we're gonna need a logical or statement. And this comes from our Boolean values, what we were just talking about. Boolean, you can see condition or condition. So here, we're gonna go back to logic. I'm gonna pull in this and I want seven or I'll go back to logic. I'll put in this, go back to procedures, pull in my dice sum, go back to math, pull in this 11. So this part is part A and let's just add a comment here and I'll say first row A, seven or 11. All right, now if I get a two, three or 12, I lose. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna click on this little settings icon. I don't want else, cause I have two other things. I have to check if it's two, three or 12 and I need to check for that. So I need to do an else statement. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to logic. I'm gonna pull in this. I'm gonna get my dice sum and I'm gonna come pull this in and this is two. Now we run into the same problem. So now instead of checking for two values, I can go and pull in an or statement and I can put this in there, but this still only has one location, but I need two more. I need to check if it's three or if it's 12. Well, you can embed an or statement. So I can go back to logic, pull my or, put that inside of there. And now it says if it's two or this or this. And let's just complete this out. I'm gonna duplicate this and plug this in and let's, I know it's gonna get bigger. This is gonna be two, three. I'm gonna duplicate this block and pull this in, or 12. So there you go. Let's add our comment here. This is first roll. This is B, two, three, 12, blues. All right. So we're just setting up our nested conditionals right now. If the seven or 11, you win. If it's two, three, or 12, you, you lose, or else, we need to set something called a point. So down here, I'm gonna pull on this one more time and do else. So it says, or else set the point. Well, what do I want to do? How can I hold a value? Anytime you need a value that you need to store, you need to make a variable. That is 3.1. 
you can see we've made a bunch of variables. Current roll, die one, die two. We made the sound effects, roll dice variable. We made the money variable. We've made a bunch of variables. We're gonna add one more variable and we need to call it something that makes sense. Well, it's the point because the point is what we need to roll. And actually let's make it even more. Our, we can make something like point to roll to win. Again, you could have just let it point. So it's down here. If you roll a four, five, six, eight, or nine, we need to know what that number is. So I'm going to do this down here and I'm just going to make it whatever my dice sum is. So you can see here, we made this really simple algorithm called dice sum. Let me pull it over here so you can see it, but we're calling it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Just this really simple, basic. This is shows you the benefit of the dry principle. In computer science, dry means do not repeat yourself. If I did not have this little basic procedure, I would have had to have die one plus die two here, plus here, plus here, plus here, plus here, plus everywhere. I can have it in one location because I know it's being duplicated every place. All right, so let's handle down here and then we'll deal with this. So down here, which is my part two, keep rolling until you get a seven or 11. So. Down here again is my, after my first roll, don't get confused. This is saying if the current roll is one, which was all of this stuff down here. I'm gonna pull it back up here. I'm gonna collapse it for now so you don't get confused. Down here is my second, third, fourth, fifth roll. Down here, you keep rolling until you get a seven or your point. So I'm gonna need an if statement, another nested one. And I'm going to say if my dice sum is equal to seven, or I can duplicate this again, or the point to roll again. These are the only two cases. After the first roll, you either roll a seven or the point, or you keep rolling until you get one of these two numbers. All right, so over here, I could do an or statement. So I could do it this way. But then inside of here, I need to do another nested if, and that would work. So I can do if, and then just duplicate this one right here. And then I can duplicate that. And that's the same thing. But this, again, this is kind of duplicated. I don't really need to say seven or 11 here. I really don't need a nested if. I can actually pull this out, get rid of that, and do this. So on the second, third, fourth row, if you get a seven, this is, let's add our comment here. This is two after first roll, first roll, and this one here, this is two, A, you rolled your point, you win. And this is to B. All right, so I'm gonna expand this now. I know it looks really weird, but you can kind of read it. On the first roll, which is all up here, if you roll a seven or 11, you're gonna win. If you roll a two, three, or 12, you're gonna lose. If you roll a, after the first roll, which comes down here, if you roll a seven, you're gonna lose. If you roll a, your point, you will win. Now. Again, talking about do not repeat yourself. Every time we win we're gonna or lose, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So up here, this is winning. Down here, this is winning. Up here, this is losing. Down here, this is losing. So I know I'm gonna have to duplicate the same thing. So again, do not repeat yourself, which is a dry principle. If I know I'm gonna repeat myself, I need to make up another procedure. So we're checking our dice rules. And so now let's make another procedure. Show results, let's call it show results. And let's add an input in here and we're gonna make it win. I'm gonna need an input because I need to know if you win or lose. So this win is actually a Boolean expression. And back over here, 3.5 talks about Boolean expressions. For relationships, we need to evaluate what Boolean expressions are. You need to pass true and false values. You can kind of see that here. This is actually what win becomes. 
this procedure, we're going to pass either true to win or false to win. And based on what they do, we will show the correct results. We either will play a, a sound effect lose, we'll say you lose, we'll lose money, all that type of stuff. So before we even code anything in here, we can already go ahead and code this part of it. Because over here, we already know where we win and lose. We simply have to pass true or false to this procedure where we're winning and we're losing. So we're going to go ahead and go procedures. I'm going to do show results. Up here on the first roll, if I get a 7 or 11, I win. So I'm going to go to logic. And I'm going to pass true. On the first roll, if I get a 2, 3, or 12, I lose. So I'm going to go to show results. I'm going to pass in false. Now, if we go down here, after my first roll, if I roll a seven, I lose. So I'm going to go back to procedures, show results. I'm going to pass in false. I did not win. And down here, if I get my point again, I win. So I'm going to go back to procedures, show results, go to logic. I'm going to pass true. This is now done. So everything's going to be happening over here. And we'll code that in a second. But we do want to give our users some, some feedback, right? They just keep rolling and they don't know what's going on. So we're going to add in some text-to-speech. So we have a text-to-speech here. Let's add that. And let's add it here inside the point so they know they have to roll it again. And we're going to just do a join statement, which was under strings, which is 3.3, 3.4, where we concatenate strings together. So this is what we're going to do right here. And I'm going to put text in the front one. And I'm going to do my point to in the second one. And what do we want to say? We're going to say your point is this. I'm going to add another block after that. That's a number. Roll this number again to win. So if I get a point, it's going to speak to them and say, your point is this, roll this number again to win. Up here for your win and lose, we're going to handle playing winning sound effects in here. So we don't have to worry about talking. We can also talk over here versus putting this in each one of these. Down here, same thing. We don't really need to handle if they win or lose, we're going to handle that in here. But what if they didn't roll a seven or 11? We want to tell the user, hey, the dice sum is this, you need to roll this to win. So let's add an else statement down here. And all we're going to do in that else statement is put in some text to speech. And again, we're going to need another join statement. And I'm going to say, you rolled a, and let's just use our dice sum again, right? So we're using this a lot. Let's go ahead and pull in this. And so you roll down, we'll put a period there. Try again. You need to roll A. And let's add two more join statements. So we're concatenating a lot of strings together right here. You need to roll A. I need my point. So I'm going to pull that. And then I will put some more text in the bottom. And let's do space to win. I'm going to take try again off of here. Say so you rolled a six. You need to roll a blank to win. I'll put try again. I'll say roll again. So there we go. So now this statement, I know it looks complicated, but we walk through it. It's pretty much done. And then we need to do our show results. And then we can add in our little sound effects and all type of things. Let's actually just check this here, check dice game. The only issue we're going to have is that we have not won or lost. So after the first roll, if we don't win, we're just going to keep on rolling if we don't get a point. So to do this, remember we have this procedure called roll dice. All we're going to do is simply add in our check dice game rolls. Put that right there. It calls it. And it does all this stuff for us. So let's just test this. Right now, the roll is zero. Come on. 
Now look, I was lucky. I rolled a six and a one. Current roll is seven. Um, and if the current roll was seven, I won. The only issue is I didn't do anything in here. Let's just roll again. Because I'm not resetting the current roll, uh, and we'll do that inside of show results, now the current roll is number two. You rolled the 10 you need to roll the zero to win. Roll again. So, so you can see point is zero right now. Because I won on the first roll, it didn't set a point. And I, I got to fix that by doing my show results. Let's see if I can refresh the screen and on my first roll try to get a point. Your point is eight. Roll this number again to win. So here we go. My point is eight. It came down here. It's not a seven or 11, a two, three or 12. So I just rolled an eight. I have to roll it again to win. So if I roll a seven, I'm gonna lose. If I roll the point, I'm gonna win or else it's gonna tell me to keep rolling. Now again, we have not built this part out, so it's not gonna do anything if I win or I lose. So I just lost six plus one, it came here, and it would have done something if I actually would have finished that. So actually, let's go ahead and finish that so you can see the full thing working. But you can see this is working. It set my point, I won one time, but we need to pull this out and finish this that way. We're done with our code. And we can actually play the game and add in the bells and whistles, the background sounds and all that type of stuff. All right. So inside of here, I'm passing true or false. True or false becomes win. I just need to check if I win. So I'm going to go back to control, pull in another conditional, click on this. If you click on it, it thinks you want to rename it. Just mouse over it. Pull this in here. If I win or else I don't, I lose. So the first thing we can do is if I win, Remember, we have this little money thing over here. So we need to update our money. So I can call this update money up here and just simply put one in there. Now, one issue, we were just testing this. Every time we roll, we were making sure that this updated in the previous thing. You rolled, you rolled, you rolled 11, you need to roll 8 to win. So you can see right, again. right here, this is going down, and we built this in the last video, and I told you this is just here so we can see that it was working. But now that we have a show results, we want to really call update money when they win or they lose. So I'm going to delete this. Make sure you delete this code block from roll dice or else you're going to charge yourself twice it's going to charge you here and it's going to charge you here so you instead of paying five dollars per round you're going to be paying ten dollars per round all right so we have that update money inside of here if i win what do i want to do well i have that win sound effect right i also want to speak and say you win and i want to set the roll back to zero if i win or lose i need to reset the game i can go back here Set current roll back to zero. By doing that, it restarts the cycle. So before, again, once I rolled and I won that first time, if I kept rolling, you can see current roll is five. It never goes back to zero. Well, when you win or you lose, we wanna make sure it goes back to zero. So we're updating our money, we're resetting the current roll. Now, what else we wanna do? Let's add in our text to speech, that's great. And we can say, you win. And down here, we can say, you lose. Pretty straightforward. This, um, this function is gonna be pretty short. Um, we have this little label right here. And you can see it over here. Call LBL win lose. So we wanna update this label. That is your text property here. Remember your text properties in App Inventor are your green blocks when you click on that same component. So if I come over here, scroll down to look for my LBL label right here. Here are my green blocks. You can see text. This is getting the text, which is a light green. I want the dark green, which is changing or setting the text. So I am going to put that up here. And if they won, I'm gonna say the same thing. You win. Now I can duplicate this. And 
let me just show you a difference. So you see you, this should say you lose. Now, instead of typing you lose twice, if I set you lose to the label win lose, I actually can go back to win lose and simply get what that value is. So win lose text is equal to you lose. Speak whatever is inside of here, it's gonna say you lose. So let's do that for both. So we're both getting and setting the text first. First we set the text and then we use whatever we set there to speak as well. Now, the only other thing we wanna do is I gave you some sound effects and I kind of gave you that over here. We have some sound effects to win and lose. We wanna play that. We can add in the computer, the casino background and I am going to leave that part for you. I just wanna show you that this works first. I want you to download those four things and I want you to make a variable like this. So I'm gonna make the variable with you, but I'm gonna leave the coding up to you. So to make this variable, we're gonna call it win sounds. It's going to be a list. And we have four items, so I'm going to need four items in my list. I'm gonna fill them all in with text values. I'm gonna duplicate that. This is going to be lose sounds. Now inside of here, now we need to upload those sounds that we have. So you can see I already have them here. Sound effect lose one, gonna upload that and upload the rest of these. So for this, we have to make sure that the sounds are exactly the same. And you can go on your computer and simply copy those sounds in wherever you saved them. So you see I have the sounds here. I'm just gonna select all of that. I'm gonna go to sound effect one lose, and they're pretty much the same. So this is my lose sound effect. I'm gonna come up here, paste that in. Now the only difference that I really made was I made it two, and then I made this three, and I made this four. But make sure you copy it because if you try to type it in and the E is lowercase, or you don't capitalize the L, it's, you're gonna have errors. It's gonna say this sound doesn't exist. The, the name of the file has to be exact. So I'm gonna go here to my cache register, and I'm gonna copy all of that. And let me show you a different way you can copy it as well. You can actually just go here. We just uploaded it, right? I'm gonna click on this one and click on download. And then I can just copy it from here. And make sure that you just type in the last part of it. So I'm gonna come here and it was dot wave. But for the last two, I'm just gonna copy these in. So this is sound effect there and sound effect there. So there is that part of it. Now, remember what I want you to do is play a sound in here. So we need an extra sound. We also need a player to play our background music. So let's go back to design. We're gonna go to media and let's add in a sound and let's add in a this. I'm gonna scroll down, this is gonna be Sound effect, win or lose, and you're gonna code that inside of our show results. This, I'm just gonna rename it PLY BG Music for background music. And I'm gonna loop it. Let's make it something like 15. You might play with this depending. And I'm going to select the background casino music that I just did. And let's go ahead and here. Now, inside of here, you're going to need to do two things. We're going to first, sound effect win or lose, you're going to have to set the source. So inside of here, you're gonna need to set the source. And inside of here, 
same thing, you're going to need to set the source. So if I win, I want to pull one of these random sounds from here. If I lose, I want to pull one of these random sounds from here. You're missing something in between this. And you're going to go back and check. If you look at your roll die, sound effects take source, we're doing something here. So how can I get a random sound if I win or a random sound if I lose? There's a block that goes in between here. We're using a list, so I would suggest looking at list and figuring that out. So pause the video and go try. <laughs> All right, so if you didn't get it, you go to list, and right here, I want to pick a random item from the list. The list I want is one sounds. I'm going to come here. Same thing, pick a random item from the list. I'm going to pull this in, and there you go. So now I've set, I picked a random item for that thing. At the very bottom, what I want to do is simply play that. Sound effect lose, play. All right, so what are we doing now we have background music we need to play it when they first start so let's go to play dice let's pull in our initialize and all we're going to do is say start our background music so now everything is working when i refresh the page this will work i don't want this to work yet i want you to see that all of this code is working and this is working as well so now we can actually keep playing all right so Actually, I'm going to disable this and refresh the screen. So I didn't want to hear my background music so you can hear me. But now the current roll is zero. And everything should be working. The money should be working. The roll should be working. The sum should be working. You win should be working as well. Now, let's roll. Your point is 10. Roll this number again to win. So it says, my point is 10, roll this number to win. But it says you win. I forgot one part. That's why it's always good to test. Whenever we roll our point, we want to show the user that number. So this right here, LBL win lose, we're going to change that to point in whatever their number is. So back over here, scroll down. Let's find our LBL win lose. And I'm gonna pull that and pull that here. And I'm gonna do a join statement and I'm gonna say point and I'm just gonna duplicate this. So I'm gonna rename this guy to win lose point. All right, so now we're back at current roll is zero. When I click roll, if I get the point, this should update as well. Your point is four. Roll this number again to win. All right, so that's roll one. I rolled a four. You rolled a nine. You need to roll a four to win. Roll again. You rolled a three. You need to roll a four to win. You rolled a eleven. You need to roll a four to win. You rolled a ten. You need to roll a four to win. You rolled a nine. You need to roll a four to win. Roll again. So, again, you can see I keep rolling until I get a... Four or seven. You roll a six, you need to roll a four to win. Roll it while you lose. So I rolled a seven and I lost. And you can see I, it was eight rolls before I actually lost. So if we roll again. Your point is four. Roll this number again to win. You rolled an eleven, you need to roll a four. Why are you WIN? says I y o u do w y i n so it doesn't like this capital over here so let's just you win or this is you lose and let's make this up here we don't want it to spell it out you win so again it's always good to test so it took three rolls that time and i won let's do it again you win. current roll was one and i rolled a seven so i won and you can see up here, my money went up. It should go down to 120 every time I roll. 
I rolled a seven again. I won $20. Your point is four. Roll this number again to win. So my point is four. You rolled a two, you need to roll a four to win. You rolled a nine, you need to roll to lose. And you can see I lost the five dollars during that roll. So everything is working. I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm gonna just refresh the emulator. Now it sounds like a casino. <laughs> I rolled a seven on the first roll. I won. I had a hundred dollars. I got a hundred twenty dollars. Let's see. Let's play like four more times. I rolled a seven again. I am winning. I need to go to the casino. Your point is four. Roll this number again to win. You lose. So I lost on the second roll. Remember, I needed to get a four that time. You Looks like I am on a losing streak now. You win. Uh, Your point is four. Point is but always four. I won again. Look at my money. It's going up. I started with $100. You win. Your point is eight. Little you lose. So that is the app. Let's just go back. I wanna show you one other thing. Let's go to sensors. We're gonna add in an accelerometer sensor. And the accelerometer sensor knows how fast your phone is moving. And it also knows if your phone is shaking. So back when Pokemon Go was very popular, it used the accelerometer sensor to know because people were playing Pokemon Go while they were driving. So they put a check using this accelerometer sensor. If you were moving faster than a human could run, they knew you were driving. They did a pop-up that said, it's not safe to play Pokemon Go while you're driving. This is that sensor that they use. Let's add this into our app. And I'm gonna disable this for now so you do not hear them and refresh. There we go. So we're gonna use this. You can see acceleration change. This is the block that they use to know if you're running super fast. We're gonna use this one, shaking. So just to simulate shaking dice, right? If we shake our phone, it's like shaking dice. We wanna play the game. Well, what plays the game? Our procedure called roll dice. So either you can press this button, roll them, or you can shake your phone. And all we're gonna do is go here, pull in roll dice. And then now we're good. I cannot shake my computer. I can't do like this. I could rotate it, which might uh, simulate that. Let's see. So I'm going to, even though it looks like. So the only way for me to shake my phone. Your point is nine. Roll this number again to win. The accelerometer sensor is working because it says if you shake your phone, roll the dice. Right now, my point is nine. If I shake it, you lose. So it's hard to see on here, but every time I shake, it's updating everything. Your point is six. Roll this number again to win. But I would say try this on your actual phone or tablet. When you shake your phone, you should see everything. It's kind of weird me having to flip this on the emulator. With that, let's go back and let's just add some really simple stuff. Let's turn this on, enable. And what I wanna do is add this to the backpack because we're gonna play the background music on everything. So I'm gonna add this to my backpack. I can right click and do add to backpack or I can simply drag it to the backpack. Now I can use that same code on other screens. So I'm gonna simply go to my dice rule screen, click on my backpack, and pull this out. I got two errors. One that says the component does not exist, and one that says the component does not exist. Well, here it is the issue. I pulled this in from the play dice screen. Play dice dot initialize, right? Well, this is not this is not the play dice screen. This is the dice rule screen. I need to change that like that. 
This one says the component does not exist. Play background music. I do not have a player over here. So I simply need to go back to design, go to media, drag in my player, dismiss. I'm gonna call POI BG music. Make sure you spell it the same. And again, I'm gonna loop it. I'm gonna set my source, which we already uploaded, which was this guy here. And you can see now that is gone, that is working. Other thing we're gonna to wanna to add is this block, if another player starts, we wanna stop this player. Since we have a bunch of players, I'm just gonna come here and pull this and add this to the background. So if I go home, or if I go to play dice, to play dice, so it stopped the other one and it started this one. So I'm gonna add this block as well. If another player starts, I wanna stop this player. And the last thing is go to the screen one. Let's pull out both of these guys. This and this. Again, play dice. This is not the play dice screen dot initialize. This is the screen one. So I'm gonna click on screen one. Other players started. We don't have a player background music yet. I'm just gonna go to media. I'm gonna drag in my player. I'm gonna rename it POI BG music. Loop it. I think we made it 25 or 15. It doesn't matter. You can play with that. Pull this down, click OK. And now you can see these arrows are gone and you can hear my background music. If I go to dice rules. Let's learn how to play dice. If I go Ready to, to play dice. Your point is six. Roll this number again to win. You roll the five, you need to roll the six to win. Roll you to win. I want to quickly disable this so you don't hear this. So this has been the video tutorial series for AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming, 3.1 to 3.7. This is Big Idea 3. You can see 3.1 was variables and assignments, 3.2 was data abstraction, 3.3 mathematical expressions, 3.4 was strings, 3.5 was Boolean expressions, 3.6 was conditionals, 3.7 was nested conditionals. In this app, we've built everything to cover 3.1 to 3.7. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.